get that um, giving them back, man, is, uh, what they've been waiting for, you know what I mean? Uh, skills. <laughs> Just a quick scene to say, in the whole scene to say, I come and play with the unexplained, with the brains, the big stand, they spray the swing slick, or play the brain game. Bless up, bless up yourself. Is another a, episode of the Troy Graham Show. The Troy Graham Show. Well, it's, <laughs> no, it's the Troy, the Troy Graham Experience. You can tell when you're having a, a bad day. The Troy Graham Experience. And on the show today, we have a family of boxers, a father and his three sons. We, and they are Baltimore's own future champions, future Hall of Famers. Them Robinson boys. Go ahead and step up in here, you know, and introduce yourself there, uh, Coach. You still. Yeah, you got to take yourself off mute. You on mute still, Sean. There you go. How you Congrats. doing, brother? All right. Um, my name is Coach. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for the invitation, man. I got you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and introduce yourself and your sons, man. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Coach Sean, uh, mother and trainer of uh, the Robinson Boys. My oldest son is uh, 18 years old. Ibrahim, they call him the hit man. Ibrahim, come over here and introduce us real fast. Oh, you want to introduce us? This is um, Ibrahim right here. Sir. Um, come here, Muhammad. There you go. This is Muhammad. What's going on, man? Y'all remember? There you um, go. Brother, uh, put some size on brother. him. Brother, before he, Omar, Omar Boxing, he used to be there, he used to have his sons there. Um, that was I have two, another two, son named Musa. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it's been a long time. Musa, come here, introduce yourself. This is Musa, my young, I mean, the, the next to the youngest, Musa Robinson. And I have a younger one that's 13 years old. Um, I'm still trying to get him acclimated back into the into the um into the sport. I'm struggling with him though. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna be honest. I'm struggling with him right now. Trying to get him into boxing like he should be. Yeah, yeah. You know, he don't take to the sport like his brothers. He he do, but it's just the 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 grind, the laziness sometimes that I see in him. You know, it's it, I I need to get in control of that because he wants to spar, he wants to do all these things, but as soon as it's time for him to put that work in, he don't want to put the work in. I man, that's all part of it. But tell us how we all got started. You know, what was the genesis? What, what sparked all this? Uh, you know, this whole thing. You know, what sparked the birth of the these boys here into the sport of boxing um what sparked it what sparked it all was when we was in pennsylvania there in 2006 2005 2006 um and i actually had them in martial arts for about two and a half years three years with uh sensei matt they his name is tremor matt tremor in york pennsylvania um and I like the conditioning. I like the um, the discipline that martial arts brought to my sons, our, our children, and I began seeing the benefit of them being disciplined, coming home from school, getting homework and stuff done. I and we going straight to the dojo. I saw the face that it helped my you know our children uh, have, along with my daughter, you know, Candice Carter. She's not. Um, um, fighting anymore, but I'm sure um, a lot of people are familiar with her too. Um, so I like the discipline and stuff that it brought to the, uh, just to that whole uh, mentality. And um, once we moved from York, Pennsylvania in 2011, I had to find them something of a, another sport. I was going to get them into 
another martial arts, but then I found boxing. Um, and then I saw what boxing. Oh, another thing. After uh, martial arts, I got with Antoine. Antoine, his, his name is Antoine Boom, up in um, York, Pennsylvania. He was the one that really brought boxing in York, Pennsylvania when they was in elementary school. It was an after school program. So once I started seeing how it was real beneficial for them in terms of the boxing, the, the just learning how to throw a jab, the one, two. Um, and then once we moved from York, Pennsylvania, that's when we got, okay, where should I put them? You know, in terms of a boxing gym. And then I found Omar Boxing on North Avenue. And then after that, that was, that was history after that. That's where it all started. You hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you started from young, you know. How old were you when you first started? Um, Muhammad. He was around maybe eight or nine. Ibrahim was around 10 or 11. Candace was around maybe 12 or 13. And Musa, he wasn't even started at, at that time. He was still, he was real young. He was around maybe six or seven. Right? Huh? This is up in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, that was in this Pennsylvania, was Pennsylvania when we was with right? Antoine. Um, okay. Yes. Right, and then he stayed there for a few years. Umar, he was he met Marvin and me. How many years were you there? Umar. And. I don't know why it sounds like you you breaking up a little bit. Yes, yeah, signal in this house is bad. You know, can you hear me better now? No. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yep. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, because I asked you, you know, how many years were you at at you know Umar boxing? Um, we was at Umar boxing for about. We started there around two thousand and eleven close to 2012, up until 2015, for about two and a half, three years. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because I remember y'all, when y'all got there, man, you, you were doing, uh, you had the camera, and you wanted to learn how to do the videos and all that, and you were doing that. And, uh, and you know, everybody yeah. was paying attention to them in the gym. Everybody was paying attention to them in the gym, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, yeah so tell days, us about man. them belts. Yeah. Tell us about them belts back there, you know, and then get them back to talk about them belts right there. You know, like you know, where's your oldest son and uh you know, where's the middle one? You know, let let, let them tell us about them belts back there. Ibrahim. Uh Ibrahim is gonna behind it. He wanna Joey ask about some of these belts. I mean, to be honest, to be honest with you, I don't even know what belt is mine, but we won these belts out of a lot of belt fights. And uh yeah, a lot of these belts was at belt fights. And um um which one Musa? I know I know um I can't remember who won this one, but this was at the sugar dirt. Oh yeah, this was I did. This was at the Sugarbird. I think me and Muhammad won this. Oh, I won a Sugarbird. Yeah, three. Of them. Where was that? That was at the Sugarbird. Sugarbird National. Come on camera, real well, quick, brother. You gotta come on camera so we can see you. Oh, hey, um, this one, this one, uh, no, that's oh, not. Was, oh, yeah, that was. Musa, Musa, wants, where do you win this? 
He just, he just won that on um, Daryl show on uh, in Oxford. Okay. That's the BF belt right here. This is the real McCoy right here. The IBF drink. He said IBF right here. Yeah. Okay. This is what they gonna win, you know, uh, willing. Okay, come on camera you know, so I can ask you a couple of questions. You, 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 you know, come on camera so I can ask you a couple of questions, brother. Right, right. And, and you 19 or you 18? <laughs> I'm 20. You 20? I'm 20. Okay, that's yeah. that's right, because you were like a year or so younger than, younger than my son. You know, you don't remember him, but yeah, you all started around the same time, because it was I had three sons and he had, yeah, Sean had three sons, but tell us about your journey, man, from, you know, starting out real young to where you are now, because you're a pro now, right, or not? Uh, are you a pro? Yeah. yeah, me and my brother. Okay. Uh -huh, okay, and you had... And you have what, like, you know, two fights already, or you know how many fights you had so far? I had one. I would have, I would have fought um, last week, but my opponent had to pull out. Yeah, yeah but tell, tell us about your journey, because you know some young folks on here that want to know, know about that journey, man, and all the her, all that hard work y'all put in to get them belts and turning pro and all that. So tell us. Tell us about the running and the getting up early and just tell us about that. Oh, that's a lot. You got to be very disciplined for that because um, when, we're, when we're preparing for a fight, you got to – it'd be a pain. Like, you, you know, you have to get up and go run, run like six miles, and I don't have – sometimes I don't feel like doing it, but I do it anyways because I know I know in the long run it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. It's going to work out. Because um, if I don't do it, it's it's, it's going to affect me, and you know I'm not trying to. I'm trying to be in shape when I when I fight, and not not trying to. I'm not trying to be beat by no bum. So I got to work extra hard. You know, put in a lot of work in the sparring. I I get I get a lot of hard sparring, top sparring, sparring the top people out there. Uh, yeah, the sparring, we get a lot of sparring. We put a lot of training in, in the morning and in the afternoons. Uh, and that's about it. And I lost a lot. Of, it's you got to be disciplined with weight too, because if you if you come in overweight, it's... yeah, 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 yeah. You know, how do you maintain weight? Because you know you're young and you burn off weight pretty fast. So you know, how do you maintain weight? Uh huh. Oh, well, first. First, you gotta watch what you eat. Uh, I most of the time I don't eat, but I don't eat after six o'clock when when my fight is you know around the corner. And when I'm old, I usually I usually put on put on a bag with, with Abilene on, and I usually get on the treadmill. I usually get on the treadmill one a couple of miles, or I would go outside. I would run six miles. When I'm overweight, and I would starve myself too, starve myself to death. That's torture. Are you all vegans? Are you a vegan? You frozen or uh, yeah? Did you hear me? This buffer. I hear you now. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was asking, you know, if you're a vegan. Oh, nah, Are nah, you? I'm oh. not a vegan. Yeah, so, you know, what's your you. plan? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, what's your plan for this year? You know, how many fights y'all put, how many, how many fights you plan on, plan on getting in this year? Well, uh, by the, uh, by the end of the year, uh, by the end of the year, I should be by the end of the year, right? I, sh I should be at least four and oh, no, nah, maybe about six. Or well, six and oh, six and oh, yeah, okay, six and oh, you know, tell us about your film study. You know, name some of the fighters that you study, man. I'm gonna uh, guess well, I can right think now, of one right now. I'm stuck. Who? 
Well, I just got finished, uh, a few hours ago. I just got finished from watching Jaron Jaron Ennis. I study I study because I'm learning how to fight Southpaw, and uh, you know he he knows how to fight Southpaw. So I, I for him. I study from uh, Earl Spencer, Terrence Crawford, uh, Javante sometimes. Uh, even Tommy Hearns, Tommy Hearns. A lot of people com- uh, compare compare me to him. That's where I got my nickname from. I kind of figure. I kind of figured that. You know, what about the old school fighters? You study any old school fighters? Yeah, yeah. Tommy Hearns. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I only studied Hearns. I like him. I tell you what, man. I'm gonna drop two names on you that I want you to check out. All right. James Tony, right? James Tony is one oh, of them, yeah, you know, James and Mike Tony McCollum. Man. Yeah, 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 you know, and Mike, Mike McCollum. McCollum. Yeah, 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 you know, he was called a body snatcher. Yeah, you know, that's self-explanatory oh, right snatcher. there, right? He was called, yeah, he was called a body <laughs> snatcher, yeah. Uh-huh. Definitely check him out, man. Definitely check him out. I will. All right, brother. All right, brother. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to your brother real quick, and ask him a few Which questions. Ah, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. Yeah, man. And stay focused, man. You still. Yeah, man. You still got that. You still got that look in your eyes. So stay focused, man. You'll do some great things. What's going on, man? You good? You gotta come on camera. You gotta come on camera, brother, so I can see you. Where you? There you go. Yeah, man, you popped in like a magician. How you doing? I haven't seen. I haven't seen you since. All right. How about you? Good. I haven't seen y'all since y'all used to go to Uman with my sons, man. No, I said I haven't seen y'all since y'all used to go to Uman with my sons, man. Can you hear me? It's been a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. And you were what? I Let's see. Your brother is man. 20. Are you 18? Yep. 18. Good. 18. Yeah, yeah. And you turned pro already. So, you know, how many fights do you have so far? I only, I only got two. And I'm still in school. So, that's probably going to – it's not going to do – it's not already in the fair, but I'm just saying. Like, two Ooh. fights are already. And two and no. I mean, a lot of people find that good. Great, that's great, man. Follow what it is. You stay focused, man. You're gonna you're gonna do a lot of things. I remember you when you was much younger. What did they used to call you, man? Was it Sugar Ray or something? What did they used to call you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Little Sugar Ray because Little, yep. Coach D, uh, my boxing, the one who passed away, unfortunately, he the one mm-hmm. who named me that because mm-hmm. he said I kind of look like him and I kind of fight like him. You know what I'm saying? Like let my hands go and all that. Yeah, man, sugar, sugar was a tactical killer in the ring, man. If he got you hurt, that was it. That was it. You done, man. You know, so, so yeah, yeah. You know, you watch any film on him, on like a Sugar Ray and all his fights. Of course. Yeah, I mean, not I ain't watch all his fights, but I definitely watch. You know, some of his his pop most popular fights, especially with the one he do like what hundred punches and letting some seconds. I forgot. But I just know that he was doing a lot of punches. Yeah, he's yeah, he was fast. He was Speed. fast. So tell us, tell us about that journey. You know, the same thing as your brother, man. You know, coming up in boxing. Tell us about your journey, man, and tell us about that one thing you just hate doing, but you know you have to do it. What's that one part of the training that you of can't course, stand? One of, them is of course, it's, it's, it's going to be watching your weight because you can't really. Like, I'm talking about like if you really gotta like lose a lot of pounds, you really gotta watch what you eat, you gotta dehydrate yourself, you know, run and all that. And then sometimes you can't eat for long periods of time, and that that don't no, ain't nobody don't want to go through that. It's a, it's, a, it's a pain. <laughs> so and I see all the them. We all I see all them belts back there, man. How many y'all belt? How many belts back there? That, you know, do you have in all back there? Twelve or something, or, uh, or, or, or is it much more than that? You talking about all together or just me winning? Or just all me? together? How many bouts I got? I got. Oh, all together is like, like one, two, three, four, three, five. Man, we won about these 35 bouts. 
Do I, I, uh, Amish, go ahead. I, I said 12. You cracked my face. I said 12. Okay. Hey, you, nah, I way more. Hey, how many Golden Gloves did you win, man? Uh, think about two, two of them when I was younger. Yeah, yeah that was the Sugar Ray Jim. Yep. Good, good, good. I mean, where do you uh, see that one, that one song? I was. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. You hear me? Uh, I said yeah. I remember that one time yeah. that boxing. One time I was at one boxing. I won like two fights in a row. I mean, yeah, yeah, two fights in a row, week after week. But Coach Dana, yeah, that's a uh, that's a memory right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Marvin, Marvin and them, man, they actually, actually love working with y'all, man. So go ahead, man. Tell me how many fights you think you're going to have this year, man. How many fights you have planned to have this year, actually? Planned at least, at least seven or eight by, by the end of the year, being eight and no. That's what, that's what we're going for. And hopefully they're going to be all knockouts. You know what I'm saying building up our record. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so, man. You all got any fights that's coming up? Like uh, I know there's a fight. What is it? The nineteenth that's at the casino, or is it this? Are you all on that card? At the horseshoe. You said the 19th? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, no I know 19th. there's some fights at the horseshoe on the nineteenth. But I know uh, we fighting next week. On March the twenty sixth, next week. I mean, not next week. My fault. I meant next month on March twenty sixth in uh in Virginia. It's gonna be our own show, but uh, hosted by James uh James Hogan, your manager, our manager, our boxing manager, and it's gonna be hosted by him. And that's what that's another fight we really looking for, uh, looking up for. All right, well, y'all got to get me the poster so I can put it out, man, and I can bring y'all back. And y'all, you know, y'all can promote that fight, all right? Yeah, no question. Yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, and if you ever need an announcer, you know, I got an announcer for you too. I got an announcer if you need an announcer and all that. <laughs> so, oh, okay, sounds great. Yeah, man. So look, I plan. I I, I see some great things for you and your brothers in the future, man. I see great things for you in the future because you weigh what one forty seven, right? I fight at one forty, but right now I'm probably like one forty seven. Yeah, one forty seven. Okay. Okay. How much your brother weigh? You talking about the bigger one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's about probably he's walking around weight is like one fifty, one fifty two, but he's fighting at one forty seven. Okay, yeah, because of his height, right? What is he six foot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is? I'm like five ten. Yeah, oh. he's six feet tall. All right, brother. You know, I wish y'all the best. You know, stick and stay with your dad or stick and stay focused. And there's nothing you won't be accomplished. I don't see y'all not being able to accomplish anything, man. Like I said in the header that I wrote up for the show, Baltimore's future champions, you know? Baltimore's uh, yeah. future Hall of Famer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So go ahead out there. Uh, go ahead out there, man, and turn me into a psychic. Go, you know, go ahead and get the championship. <laughs> All right, brother. Yes, sir. All right. All right, Coach Sean, you jump back on here, man. Yeah, yeah, so man. tell us, man, you know, how hard is it to be the coach, coach and the father? It's a it's a draw, it's a it's a line, you know, that um sometimes it's a it can be very complicated because sometimes I gotta switch off the father role and get connected to the trainer role. And then sometimes I gotta switch off the trainer role and get connected back to the father role. Um so you know, I, I, I it's it's a it's a thin line. You know, I have to be balanced. So you know, it's it, it can be very difficult sometimes because they hear me, they hear my voice all the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And then there's the it's balance different. between. Uh... Go ahead, Sean. No, I was saying that it's very is is it can be very frustrating and very difficult because, like, sometimes I be thinking like you know it's it's easy for for me to just at one time or another to take my sons to the gym and drop them off and let another coach train them and and set up sparring and make sure that he's good and doing all these other things, you know, uh, and, and, and sometimes even the gyms can flip the bill, taking them to tournaments and stuff. But when you, I, you know, when, a, when I have to do all of that by myself, <laughs> it ain't no joke. Is no joke, but yeah, man, you know, and I still got to talk to your youngest son, son too. I didn't talk to him yet. Oh, Musa? where's your youngest son? Yeah, Musa, Musa, come here. He's getting ready to go to the nationals in um in April. He's ranked right now number eight in the country. So, what's going on, man? Good. I'm trying to guess your age. What are you, 17? 16. 16 years 16. old. Okay, good, good, Musa. Okay, tell us, same thing, you know, tell us tell us about your journey, man. Your dad said, dad said, you know, you're the youngest of the bunch, man. He got to push you the hardest. So, so, you know, go ahead and tell us about your journey, man. My journey? Yeah, you know, your Maybe. journey in the sport of boxing. In my amateur boxing, maybe I want to uh, make it to the USA boxing team. Maybe. You know, maybe. That's what you want to do. Because I've got COVID, so. You got any Thinking thoughts of turning team. pro like? You, you yeah, got so any thoughts of turning pro like your brother? When I turn 18. Huh? When I turn 18. Okay, when you turn 18. What do you weigh right now? About 130, 30-ish or something like that? Yeah, 132. Okay, what you going to shrink down to like 126? Nah, no. Probably like one, 136 yeah. or 140. Okay, so you going to go up? Yeah. That's going to be kind of rough on you, man, because you know them boys come in heavy. Boys coming heavy, you know. Tell us about your style too. What kind of style? Because I know, uh, I know Muhammad. They they always call him Sugar Ray. Then they call they call your oldest brother, uh, you know, Tommy Hearns, the Hitman. So you know, who are you? Yeah, you know, what's your my, nickname? My nickname is the the Quiet Storm. When the Quiet Storm, when you coming to the ring, you know, you, come into the you, you said Quiet Storm, right? Yeah. What you coming to the ring, you know, playing a lot of love music? Nah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. You know, bring down your style to us. You jab and all that. You know, how do you Yeah, I have a lot of defense. I jab a lot. Uh I move around a lot. I throw my right hand sometimes, but I throw my jab a lot though. Okay, man. And uh, uh, you know, who do you study? Like, you know, name some of the fighters that you watch. And you study and you learn from. Well, I study uh Harold Spence, Floyd Mayweather. Uh yeah, I, I study Harold Spence a lot though. Where are your two brothers at? Call them back real quick. What's Bob? Hey, bro. Hey. Stay, stay, stay. Stay, stay. All of y'all stay. You know, where's the other brother at? Okay, yeah. I got a question. That's why I want all three of y'all here. Oh, all right. We need you. Yeah, because I heard a name. I didn't hear you say one name, man. You know, it was one name that I didn't hear y'all say that kind of surprised me. None of y'all said Crawford. All of y'all said Errol Spence. Check yeah. Yeah. Nah, you ain't say Crawford. You said Spence. 
You said respect. Oh, I said respect. Well, yeah. both of them are good fighters now. You know, both of them are good fighters. But if you had to pick between one of them, let's say if they fought, you know, who would win? Errol Spence, Errol Spence would be crazy. Not easy, but Errol Spence, yeah. It would be a tough fight. Uh, all of y'all th- think, you know, Errol Spence going to be Crawford? I'm not sure about them two, but I said Errol Spence. Yeah, Errol Spence. Man, he got love, you know. I don't. I, I, I tell you what, you know, what's your favorite food is? You said what's, what's your, your what's favorite, favorite food, food is? What's your favorite spot to eat at? Yeah, what's your favorite it's spot to eat at in right the city? Right now, Olive Garden. I tell you what, if, if if they fight, if they fight, and uh, and, you know, Errol loses, right? You know, y'all gonna take me to get some jerk chicken, and if. If he wins, I'll take you out of Olive Garden. Fair okay. enough? Bet. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. You got to take a picture of me holding that IBF belt, too, if I win. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, man. Let me let me finish talking to your brother. All right. All right. Yeah, man, you know, I, I was just curious why none of y'all picked Crawford, that's all. Crawford a beast, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, both of them both of them are very similar, man, you know. So so you know, tell me what you like about Arrow over uh, over Crawford. Arrow Spence, uh he throw his jabs a lot. That's what I like about him. And he keep his distance and he's smart in the ring. Can you switch to Southpaw too? Uh, I used to practice, but I'm kind of good with it, but not good, good. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you could do it, but it just don't feel natural? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, you might want to practice that, man, because you might run up on someone who actually gets your timing down. And and if you switch up on them, that'll throw their timing off a little bit, you know. Yeah, you know, all your punches come come from the opposite side will throw them off a little bit, you know? Yeah. I, I can see you doing that though. I can see you doing that. It feels kind of strange at first, but once you get used to it, it's like real smooth. It's like real smooth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, but I'm proud of you because you don't hear a lot of, uh, you, you know, you don't hear a lot of, you know, 16 year olds talking about jabbing and moving. Everybody won't go in there and just take everybody out, but you want to box. Well, they want to do the same box and take them out. He, he has the most, uh, hey, Troy, he had Musa has the most stoppages on the. From all of my sons, he has the most stoppages on his amateur record. He has like at least eight to ten stoppages. Okay, okay. So you a tactician and you a silent killer. That that's your new name right there, silent killer, <laughs> silent killer. Huh? Silent killer. <laughs> you might do that, BLM. Yeah, man, that's sharp though. That tells me you got a good mind on you for the sport. That's 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 very sharp, you know. Uh, and you know, and uh, you know, and uh, I'm trying to say something, but some tells me that you use your eyes a lot in the ring, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Like you study the fighter that's in front of you, and then you break him down. Yeah. Explain. How good, you good, good, good. Good. You got a mind for the sport. You got an eye for the sport. That's called being a tactician, man. So that's a great thing. That's a great thing. But all right, then, brother. Let me finish up with your dad, man. It was good speaking to you, and I see some. I see some great things for you and your brothers in the future, man. All right. I'm all right. Hey, 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 man. You know, and I still want my curry go to if that. Uh, I mean, my jerk chicken if that fight happens. All right. <laughs> all right, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. Go ahead. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I like Crawford, though, man. I like Crawford because he's versatile. And 
a lot of the times people don't really look at his history, but Crawford has, he's, you know, 135, and then he conquered the 140, you know, and then he went up to 147. Earl Spencer Jr., don't get me wrong, I, I like Earl Spencer Jr. too. Um, both of them are, you know, uh, Lions. Um, I just like Crawford because he's a little bit more versatile. You know, he has a little bit more uh, ammunition in his can, in his in his tank, you know, to be able to switch up and he can switch to different levels. Earl Spencer Jr., he's basic. You know, he's a tech, he's a technician, you know, because he, he'll break you down just with the jab and just, you know, giving you pressure. And then a lot of the times people don't know how to be able to react off of him just walking you down, you know, his distance. And then he parries the jab a lot. He, he'll parry the jab and then counter. And then if, once he gets you against the rope or in the corner, it's game over, you know. So, but he's he's a southpaw. He don't switch. He, he's just basic, ordinary, fundamental boxing. But Crawford, he's a little bit more just above just being ordinary. He's a little bit more where you you really don't know what to expect from Crawford. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I like about him because he's a little bit more full of surprises. But both of them got a killer mentality, though. They see you hurt, oh, it's game over. Yeah, man. I dropped a, uh, the, a link in the chat if anybody wants to pop up and ask, ask you or your sons any question. But, you know, just hearing you talk about your son, he sounds more like Crawford to me than anybody else, you know, based on how you say he fights, right? Who, Musa? Yeah, he sounds more like a Crawford type of guy because Crawford is very subtle in there because, you know, he learned – Crawford Crawford's a street fighter that became a boxer. It ain't right. vice versa with him. He's a – yeah, he's a, he, he's a street fighter. Nah, I got you. Yeah, he was – yeah, I mean – I was just looking at a, a documentary of Crawford today and, um, you know, saw how his mom just basically <laughs> put him in that, put him in the trenches and made his butt work, made him, made him fight. Um, that's but the that's right. And that's that right. And you tell your son, my boy, me, man, that I, I, I'll be trying to get, you can't teach them to have a killer mentality. Musa does though. Like when Musa, he sees you, you hurt, he'll try to take you out. Muhammad and Ibrahim, they was a little bit more subtle, but they're beginning to understand really? now what's that state. I don't know why, but I thought it was different. I guess because he was the youngest, you pay so much attention to the older ones, you don't really pay attention to the younger ones, and they then they sneak up on you. Yes, yeah, they sneak up on you. Yeah, man, but you know what? I was gonna. Ooh, what the heck was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought that fast. But yeah, I was gonna say he's uh, he has that he has that kind of quiet demeanor, kind of like Ray Leonard was. He's uh, he's very tactical in the ring, but if he gets you hurt, that's it. Yeah. That's it, baby. That is it. Yeah, it's it's you can't teach that. You know, it's something that they have to have. So, I mean, and it comes in time to some people. Yeah, so, you know, you know, you know, you're the future of boxing in Baltimore, man. You're going to have to carry the sport to the next level. And then, if, you know, next thing you know, you're going to be out there, you know, speaking to the youth and all that, too. So, yeah, man. Yeah, but tell us about some of the some of the work you do, do out here already that's in the community, man, charity work and all that. Um, well, we um, love doing that we haven't done in a while that our, and we intend on doing, um, hopefully in March, is we um, built a community garden a while ago, you know, planting um, gardens and stuff. Um, it taught us a whole lot. We planted a garden at Wal Walbrook Junction area. Um, it was real vivid, you know, because we planted um, watermelon, zucchini broccoli um uh what else um cabbage uh carrots um i mean it was beautiful man it, it was a real big garden and then not only did we plant the garden we was able to give a lot of food and stuff away to you know homeless people and other 
people like Mar what Marvin is doing now. You know, um, a lot of the times when he have all the people come and bring food, bring the, the vegetables and stuff in front of his gym, and you know, a lot of people come and help out distribute the uh, the vegetables. Right, to, right, right. You know, right. What people need. Right, so he's doing a food bank pretty much, right? Yeah, but the, pretty but much doing we, food giveaways and all that. Right. But we was able, we were blessed to be able to learn how to grow the food from scratch. We went out and actually looked at the some land that we was able to till. And then we just planted a couple of weeks, went out there, worked the soil, broke the soil down, rented a tiller, you know, broke it down. And then after that, we um just started planting the seedlings inside the cups and stuff like that. And we was able to teach other little kids and stuff too, man. To be able to just learn how to grow your own food, that's very important. And that's what I want them to be able to learn. So once we get to a certain point, you know, where they making up where you know they making a lot of money and stuff, I want them to be invest to be able to grow some buy some land and grow some some food, you know, and then be able to teach it to others, have little kids come out from different areas and communities and stuff, and being able to just get that experience on what it feels like to be able to live out in a farmland or, you know, in, in, in some land and learning how to grow food. You know, that's very important. Yes, and it, feed the yes it is. It's actually very powerful, too. You know, once you're able to feed yourself and grow your own food, you, you, you're you going to be all right if the power ever goes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. You'll yeah, and you said hungry. you teach kids how to, you said you teach kids how to do that. Is that is that a class that you hold ever so often, or you know how to, you know how often do you do that? I haven't um, done it actually. I haven't I haven't done it in a while, a couple of years. Um, but it's in the it's in it's in the making. You know, it's 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 something that I I I would love to do. I intend to do. Um, it's just. I have to get myself back because being out here, putting ourselves out here, you know, striving, grinding. Now that they pro, it takes a lot more time, a lot of a lot more of my time. So I really don't have a lot of time in between to do a whole lot because it's just so much that has to be done. But you know, as as we continue to proceed. And as we continue to get more acquainted and familiar with this pro, you know, it's like I'm learning boxing all over again, you know, from the amateurs, you know, how I used to do. And the load that it, that it, that it, that, 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 that we carry, you know, as amateur boxing, especially as a coach. Now I'm a pro coach <laughs> and I still have an amateur Musa and Yusuf. So I just have to now be able to find a, 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 a balance in between so I can still be able to get out there, with, you know, with my boys and be able to have them still do something for the, you know, get in the community, give back, you know, go to some um, like that. We have a we, we used to have a lot of um, brothers and sisters out there feeding the homeless at certain times on Sundays. They would meet down there on. Uh, OK. What's that on um, East Fayette Street, um, right there by the the post office, and the homeless people will be out there. And they I know where it is. Food. I know where it is. Yeah, they would get food, shout. I mean, food, clothing, and all of that stuff. Like I, we, they used to be doing all that. I mean, we still do it. We haven't done it in a while, though. You know, due to COVID and all of that stuff. But yeah, when the community, when some of my homies in the community, when they reach out and. You know, they ask us, can we be a part of? We always there. I got a question for you, uh, man. You know, do you travel to train too? Do you do you do you tra do you go out of town and all that to train too? We I like, say if somebody town. could get to. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, because I was asking because I see, I see my partner. You know, my partner. You know, in greatness in here, major key, and I know he was telling me about this. Uh, the 16 year old fighter that he knows and he knows the guy's father too. And he said the 16 year old was real sharp. I just, I'm not sure to wait. And if he's still in here, he could just uh, jump on the link and tell, talk to you about that, you know, that 15 or 16 year old. Yeah, Cause this kid was pretty sharp from my understanding. He was, uh, 
sparring with pros and all that. And he only 16. Oh, okay. You know his name? No, nah, I don't remember his name. That's the whole thing. I, I don't remember too much nowadays, brother. Yeah. I we don't travel remember too much lot. nowadays. Okay, yeah, because he's in Florida. He's in Florida? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, Florida and Philly, you get a lot of good work there. Ooh, you get a lot yeah. of good work in Florida and Philly. Bro. Yeah. Flo like, like the South, once you hit Florida, that's when you got to put that work in. That's when you got to put the real work in. Like the Carolinas and stuff, you should be able to handle your own down there, right? I'm not trying to insult the Carolinas. They're probably listening. But uh, <laughs> well, Florida is nothing to play with, you know? Florida. Now, Florida. Florida uh, Philadelphia, yeah. not, not to play with, uh, Vegas, um, Texas. We, um, but see, as amateur, when my boys were, man, they didn't fought them all. I mean, they've been all over the place. You know, Muhammad didn't fought everybody from Vegas all the way up. To, and, you know, some of the amateurs in Florida, Ibrahim, Musa, he, they didn't fall some of the top amateurs. And some sometimes they won, sometimes they lost by a split. But they they never blown out, never been stopped. None of my boys never been stopped before. It's always been either split or, you know, they either won. Um, but we want that work. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, you know, I keep my boys under sparring top you know, top level uh, fighters like Ibrahim spars Trayvon Marshall a lot. You know, under uh, Andrew Council. Um, yeah, you know, Andrew Council. Uh, Andrew Council's boys are nice, man. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew used to be in the gym with me, and uh, uh, you know, in Rockville, Andrew was nice too. Andrew was real nice. Oh yeah, yeah, he was a pro fighter. You know, I mean, he was putting in his work, and you know, he's a man that knows what he's doing. You know. Um, Muhammad spars Jamal Harvey all the time. Um, that's his stable mate. A lot of the times they were stable mates growing, you know, coming up. Jamal Harvey won a couple of nationals. Now he just won a world national championship. And um, they got a history together. I mean, Musa, he didn't fought in um Kamel Moten over there in Vegas. He's he fought uh Robert Murrayweather in Vegas. Um, I mean, my boy then sparred and been in the ring with some of the top fighters, man, either as amateurs and nowadays, you know, having an opportunity to spar pros like Lil Vito that's in Jersey. Um, I mean, Muhammad spars him a lot. Um, Trey John Wiggins, they just sparred. He just won the WBA or NABA uh, World World Championship with uh, Don King. I mean, and we're going to continue to keep going and keep growing, you know. I see them in pictures with Tank all the time. They ever put any work in with Tank? We haven't put any work in with Tank yet. Um, I mean, you know, we they had those pictures when we was at Upton. You know, I always say Muhammad reminds me of Tank because Muhammad has a lot of power. It brings, all, of, all of my boys have power. Uh, I think this Muhammad has just that natural ex explosion. Ibrahim has tactical power, you know, like. Where are you at now, Sean? Where are you at now? In the house? Yeah. Where? I'm in, in, the, uh, in the dining room area. No, 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 man. Uh, no, no. I mean, gym. Gym-wise. Oh, in the gym-wise, um, I train sometimes out of uh, – where we at um what's that um Westminster Westminster Mall we out there on Mondays Wednesdays and Thursdays sometimes I also have the keys and we train out at Charm City down there at uh, Max L's where Max L uh, Taylor be at Charm Tom City Jim. where is that Federal Hill yeah uh, Charm City we call it Patterson Park Patterson Park Noble Street okay um sometimes be there um. So, um, and then, you know, sometimes we training out of my own home, my little makeshift gym. So I have three different locations where I can train. But right now, currently, um, we at Westminster Mall at Madhouse Boxing. They call it Madhouse Boxing um, in Westminster Mall. That's where we be at mo most of the time. Training. That's a little ride, isn't it? It's a ride for me, about 30 minutes. But it's not bad. It's just as long as me going down to Trump City. 
because we move we, we we live on the west side we don't live on the east side no more yeah and you know they all talked about you know maintaining their weight so you know who you know who's in charge of fixing the meals and all that me <laughs> okay Okay, yeah. Most part. I mean, yeah, my wife, yeah, she, yeah. and I know that you, she, she, uh -huh. she, she, I said, my wife, she does a lot of when she has time, she has, a, she, she does a lot of prepping the food, like making sure that the meat and stuff is seasoned. But at the end of the day, I'm the one that's prep, I mean, fixing the food and stuff. Got you. And I know you're Muslim, so you don't eat pork, so you do fish, chicken, and turkey. Um, well, you know, my Muslim experience has gone and I have grown since. So, oh, okay. Um, okay. No, I'm, I'm not Muslim. Any. I mean, I, you know, I'm always going to submit to the most high. Um, but I've grown, but yeah, I don't eat, uh, uh, I don't eat pork. Of course, we don't, I don't eat seafood. I don't eat, um, okay. you know, oysters, shrimp. Crabs, lobsters, and all of that stuff. Okay, okay. You don't eat shellfish. You don't eat shellfish. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Shellfish. So try to yeah, keep it clean. Mind. Yeah, because y'all stay in shape. I, I tell you that much. I, I, I can't say I can't say I've ever seen y'all out of shape ever. I always <laughs> been in shape, and that goes back what was it ten or twelve years ago? No, no, no. Wait, wait. Because he said he. It was ten years ago. It was about ten years ago because they all about the, around the same age. Because my son's uh twenty going on twenty one, then nineteen going on twenty, sixteen going on seventeen. Yeah. You say they always stayed in shape, huh? Everybody stayed in. Shape. I, I always thought that we was gonna come up together, man. All our sons are gonna come up together, but my sons never really loved the sport like that. You know, two of them love football. And the other one, he tried out basketball for a while, but they didn't really love it, and I didn't want to be the father that pushed it on them, you know? Yeah. It's not a sport to love, really. You, you, I mean, I've never boxed before. A lot of people wondered that I have a box, and I always told people I have never boxed, but I always had a fighting spirit. I knew how to fight, you know? When I grew up, I knew how to fight, you know what I'm saying? But I was always humble. But I don't think no one really... I mean, unless you just like to fight, you know what I'm saying. No, no one boxing really likes to you though. Face. Yeah, yeah um, you know, boxing is like that siren out at sea. Boxing calls to you. Boxing calls to you. You don't call it the boxing. You know, boxing right. attaches itself to you. It's kind of like an addiction right. after a while, but it attaches itself to you. You don't trust me. You do not call to this sport. It calls to you because you have to. You have to literally be half crazy to want to do it all the time and plus all the work you have to put in it calls yes. to you you don't call to it sacrifices and all yes yeah, yeah exactly because you can't look at it like a job or nothing as soon as you do uh, that you're gonna fail yep you gotta love it and that's something that is crazy though because i love the sport you know it's it's i i always look at it as life you know like it's 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 similar it's similar to life you you know you grow up I mean, you born alone in, in this world and and sometimes you get knocked down, you got to get back up. And that's what we got out of GF Nation. That means to get up, you know, and it represents, you know, struggle. It represents never giving up. You know what I'm saying? And look at our struggle. People have grown with us on Facebook and seen our boys from eight, nine, all the way up until now. They didn't see me posting you know, when we was in tournaments and stuff and we didn't get that call and we traveled all the way from here all the way to Kansas City, Missouri or Louisiana and got, you know, whatever robbed or whatever you want to call it. And then you got to take that long trip back home after you just spent two thousand twenty five hundred dollars and not bring nothing back home where everybody else sporting their gold and their, you know, That's jackets the and stuff. Hurt. Huh? That's the part that hurts the most. It, it, it hurts the most because that's a long ass trip back home. And then you just wondering like, damn, what, what, what did you do wrong? What, what can we do to improve for the next time? And then you get hit with the next time. And you, I mean, it's a non going struggle. 
And you got to, like you said, you got to love it, man. Because if you don't, you're going to, I've seen so many people quit this sport. Fathers quit this yeah. sport. Their sons quit this sport. Well, like I said, it's a calling, brother. But we're coming up on the hour mark. So let's tell the people, you know, you know where you could be reaching social media and, you know, where your next fight is and when. You're supposed to get me to, uh, you know, the poster so I can put it up for you. All right. Yep. Um, our next fight coming up is hopefully it's going to be sometime maybe in this month, February the 19th or February the 26th. And it may be either Rosecroft or it may be um, back in South Carolina. And then the next show that we are having ourselves where we'll have tickets because it's our show is on March the 26th in Ashburn, Virginia. Um, that's that's where we're having our next show in um, March on March the 26th ashburn virginia you could go to box record and look at march the 26th and it's already there as far as the uh the lineup some of the fights yeah, do some, are already there. yeah do some local I, fights man i got two vehicles you know one is one is getting repaired and one i can't you know one i can't take to virginia i take it at the virginia yeah do some local <laughs> fights is we want to do some local fights but it's just a little bit more complicated you know with uh you know uh you know, the live casino and all, you know, the, the guy that runs that show, you know, our manager, you know, my my boy's manager, um, James, you know, Ponytail, he's the one that gets my boys on these shows and stuff. So whatever he thinks is, 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 is good. We roll with it. So, I mean, whatever, you know, we got to link up with him. Um, yeah. So it's, I'll get you the information and uh, we are located. Y'all can, mm-hmm. every, every, we have an uh, Instagram called Dem Robbers and Boys, D E M R O B I N S O N B O Y Z. That's on Instagram. We have a TikTok, also Dem Robbers and Boys. We have a Facebook page, um, a professional Facebook page called Dem Robbers and Boys. Um, and yeah, and that's it. And plus, we are also with Title Boxing. Um, my boys are ambassadors under, under title boxing brand. So that's where okay. y'all can find me. Well, all right there, brother. It has been pleasure. And tell your sons, I said, you know, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. I've been saying it throughout the whole show. I see, I see great things with them, and I'm not just saying it. I always have, you know. I always have. I said, if, I said if they stay focused, they go a whole lot further than mine, and lo and behold. <laughs> Lo and behold, but you know, because you all got a hell of a story to tell, and you're still writing it, right? Yes, sir. So just yeah, just keep me in the loop. Anytime, anytime you got a fight coming up, give me about a week or two, and uh, you come on and you promote it. All right. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the inv- invitation and all. No problem, man. And stay in touch, man. And let me know when you, when you, when you're selling, you know, you, you know your your uh, fruits and vegetables. So I can stop by. And buy some, man. Oh, yeah. Right. You ain't got buy none. We'll give it to you. For the All right. Well, blessings, blessings, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. And, yeah, and, you know, I tell you what. Maybe you could get some fights uh, fights at the arena. What is that place? The Dew Burns Arena? Is it a Dew Burns Arena? They used to put on fights? Uh, yeah, or not? Nah? Yeah, it's called the Dew Burns Arena. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's past, that's past Federal Hill, right? No, not no. Yep. I, I mean, Fell's Point. Fell, go past, yeah, yeah, uh, Fell's yep. Point. Yeah, yep. right, yeah. Right, so I see. think right when you get to downtown Harbor, you make that left and you keep straight on. Yep, straight you, on and, down. You, and you go straight down Broadway. You just keep going straight. Yeah, you go straight down. But yeah, tell them, tell them to book some fights over there so I can come. I can't make it to Virginia yeah, in this van, man. I ain't gonna make it home. <laughs> I ain't gonna make it home, brother. <laughs> yeah, I will need that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Well. Hey, man, it's been a blessing, man. Thank you. It was good seeing you again after all this time, man. Same to I see you, we man. all agree a little up. bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the black salt and pepper is, is coming, man. You know? <laughs> but, it, but it looks good. You know, I can't complain. You know, I didn't like it at first, but I had to learn to love it. Hey, I, I look rough. I haven't shaved anything in a minute, but I'm going I'm to shave tomorrow when I'm off. I'm off Thursday. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But all right, all right, brother Sean, man. Thank you again, and thank you, boys. And tell them, thirty-five belts. Whew, all right now. 
That's more. That's more. They had more belts than that. They've been giving belts away now, man. They Musa don't even yeah. compete people with belts because it's, we have them all. You know, it's like we give it. We we, we he'll win a belt and then I'm like, just give it away. We've been there, done okay. it. Okay. Tell you what, I had to ready to do my outro. I'm doing a new new outro. I found this. Uh, how about Bobby Chess? Yeah, I don't. I, I'm sorry, man. I'm doing. I'm doing three things at once. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, man. I'm I'm just getting ready to do my uh, you know, do my outro and all okay. of that. But like I said, man, I'll be in touch and definitely send me the poster for your next flight, the one that's going to be in VA. All right. Yep. Yep. As soon as we get it, I, I'll definitely send it to you. All right, man. Let me go ahead and do this outro. And you have a blessed day, and, and you keep on doing that, man. Father, son, trainer, and uh, and our builder at the same time, man. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, brother. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Coach Sean and his three sons, them Robinson boys. You gotta, you gotta look for them in the future, they are future Hall of Fame. Uh, well, I I say they are Baltimore's boxing future, but they they just may be boxing's future. They're future champions, future Hall of Famers. I know what I know and I know it. And I'm telling you that telling you that they're gonna be there. All right. So let me try this new outro. And y'all tell me what you think. And thanks again to the Robinson family for coming out. Appreciate your time and energy, man. Thank you. I hope I didn't just say that in vain where I said that I see great things for the Robinson boys in the uh, in the future. And they are, to me, they're the, Baltimore, the future of Baltimore boxing. But you never know, man. They might just be the future of boxing. Future champions, future Hall of Famers. They're going to do some great things, you know. Do some very, very great things, so. I'm trying to get this outro right so I could get it right. Uh, I got to work on technical stuff, but here we go. Bless up. I can't give you no more than that. I get in trouble. The man said, if Ja is by my side, why should I be afraid? That's right. Why should you be afraid if God is by your side? On that note, amen, amen, and amen. I'm God.